All right, just like how when we did the derivatives, I taught you all these derivative functions. Now, when I'm talking about anti-differentiation or integration, I need to do the same. So today in lesson 6.2, we're going to look at anti-differentiation of exponentials and trig functions. So all those derivative rules from the previous units can all be reversed. Yeah, reversed to create the following corresponding anti-derivative rules. And once again, these are in a box, so you need to memorize them. So the integration of e to the x dx is just the original function e to the x. But don't forget now, plus c. If it changes from e to a base of a, then it's still the same function, a to the x, but then you have to divide by ln a. Remember how before we had an extra factor of multiplication of ln a? Now the reverse process, divide by ln a plus c. And then all of those trig functions, you got it. It's the reverse, so the integration of cos is sine. The integration of sine is negative cos. The integration of secant squared is tangent x. Don't forget plus c for all of these. The integration of cosecant squared x, of course, is negative cotangent x plus c. Integration of secant x tangent x is secant x plus c. And cosecant x cotangent x, negative cosecant x plus c. Now, the most common errors with trig functions, of course, are sine errors. So here's a little trick, okay? First of all, if you notice, all the trig answers that begin with C have negatives in front, okay? Now, for sine and cosine, you can think about this nice, simple diagram, or if I put sine, cos, negative sine, cos like this, the derivative goes clockwise, and the antiderivative goes counterclockwise. Or I think in my previous units, or my previous videos, I just wrote down sine, cos, negative sine, negative cos. And once again, going downwards, you're doing the derivative. So going upwards would be the antiderivative. Okay? Whatever works, you just need to know and memorize them so that you can do the following examples. Yeah. So looking at number one, how do I integrate negative three sine x dx? Well, once again, the negative three is like a constant. We can just ignore it. Negative three, the integral of sine x dx, and we know that is equal to mm -hmm, negative cosine of x. Okay. And then don't forget plus c. And of course, we can just put that together. So three cosine of x plus c. For number two, we'll just do the integral of e to the x. Oh, that's the nicest one. That's always the same thing, e to the x. Careful with this two to the power x. Yes, it is the same thing, but now you have an extra factor of ln two that you need to divide by this time, okay? And then don't forget plus c as well, okay? Oh, this looks ugly, but I'm gonna convert that into an exponent first, probably two thirds, mm-hmm, okay? So now when I take the antiderivative in this case, that five is a constant, I'll just ignore it. We'll add one to the exponent, so one plus two thirds is five thirds. We'll divide by the new exponent, which is five thirds. The integral of cosine, of course, is, yep, sine, so sine t. And the antiderivative of negative one is just one t. And don't forget plus c. We will simplify this, 5 divided by 5 thirds, that's the same thing as 15 divided by 5, so that will be 3. So 3t to the 5 thirds plus 3 sine t minus t plus c. And that is our final answer. And for number 4, well, that 4 in the denominator is like a constant, so let me just ignore that or take it out. I have the integral of secant y tangent y of dy. Secant y tangent y, yeah. That seems to be the derivative of the secant function. So the antiderivative of that would be then, yes, the secant function. Don't forget, plus c. That's it for number four. And for number five, if I've got the derivative being the cosecant x all squared. Hey, by the way, that's the same thing as cosecant squared x. And, ooh, what's this? This looks like some initial condition. Well, can you find the function f of y, f of x? So, 
What is the antiderivative of cosecant squared x? Hopefully you remember, that's just cotangent. And remember, this is the one where, yes, it's negative. Why is it negative? Why is it negative? Why is it negative? Yeah, because, because it starts with the C. And then now you just have to apply this and plug in the initial condition. So 3 equals to negative cotangent of 5 pi over 4. And the tricky part is what is the cotangent of 5 pi over 4? Hopefully you remember the cotangent of 5 pi over 4. That's in quadrant 3. We have the nice 1, 1, root 2 triangle, but the 1s are negative because they're in quadrant 3. Cotangent is the same thing as adjacent over opposite. So it just happens to be positive 1. So 3 equals to negative 1 plus c. c equals to 4. And there we go. f of x then must be the negative cotangent of x plus 4. Okay. So really, same thing as lesson 6.1. Except now I've threw in some exponentials and trig functions. So if you didn't do less than 6.1 homework, <laughs> you better do it now. In addition to the 6.2 assignments that your teacher has subscribed to you to do. All right. Please work on this because lesson 6.3 is a difficult one. And you need to know 6.1 and 6.2 well before doing 6.3. We'll see you then.